Mashuda, thank you so much for joining us at the Chennai Storytelling Festival. Please tell, us, please tell us a little bit about your work and, and then please tell us a story. Hello, everybody. My name is Mashuda. I'm from the Chennai Storyteller Group. I am uh, on the, uh, I am planning for, uh, uh, sorry, my own uh, institution, which is Meticulous Master, which is under progress, which will start by, in a, by another year. Here and there, I'm doing few workshops. Uh, I'm engaged, so I am uh, unable to start right now. Today, um, I, uh, uh, Purnima, your story was wonderful, Purnima, the broken cup. And let me start today, I'm going to share a story which has personally connected with me. And I think there will be many of us who will connect themselves to this story. This story is about an eagle, which I have taken from uh, Google, uh, from a, a channel Minnesota Born. It was a two minute video. And then I did a little research on it. Then I illustrated myself. And the first time I've written a story illustrating it. And I've named it as Sucker, the Exemplary Eagle. Uh, first of all, before I start, I would uh, request you all to close your eyes, to open your mind, take a deep breath, and relax for some time. Try in some way to connect yourself to Sakhar. It was a cold evening. The storm was within and the storm was outside. It was a dense forest with thick green leaves, bushes, and everyone in the forest could hear the crying sound of an eagle. It was crying the whole night. It couldn't sleep. Slowly, the sun came out behind the clouds in the morning and there was a warm sunshine and the whole forest witnessed a beautiful eagle fluttering its wings and coming towards the nest of Sakr. It came very close and knocked the door. Sakr didn't open. Nasser just pushed and went in. Sakr was very happy seeing it was none other than Nasser, his father. Sakr started weeping. He cried. He put his head down. He did not utter a word. Nasser slowly came close to him and said, here, my darling, take this fish. You need this most at, at this time. With no looking back, Sakar took the fish and he ate it. He ate it so fast and then he put his head and he cried. He cried and cried. Father was quiet. Nasser was watching him. Then Slowly, Sucker broke his silence. Oh, Dad, I'm done. I am no more. I don't know what I will do for a living. You know what? My beak is bent. My talons, they have lost their grip. And my feathers, they are thick and heavy and they're stuck to my chest. How will I fly? How will I go hunting for my food? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Oh, Father. Please help me, I'm done. He cries. After a while, Nasser starts laughing. He laughs. Sakar is clueless. Oh my, why are you laughing, father? Come on, come along with me. Let's go. Let's fly over to that mountain top as we always used to go. Dad, why don't you understand? I'm telling you, I cannot fly. All my feathers are stuck and they're heavy. Oh, come on, darling, I'll help you catch, catch my talons, catch me, let's fly. And they slowly flew, 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 and disappeared in the clouds. After a few hours of flying, they went to the mountain top and they settled there. Sucker cried, weeped, father, you are not trying to understand my problem. Why are you doing this to me? Let me die. Okay. Okay, Nasser. Okay, Sakar. I will not disturb you anymore. But that's something which I want to share with you. First, listen to it. Then you can take your decision. The choice is yours. Now, 
life is pain in life is inevitable as we all know pain in life is inevitable you have two choices in life the first choice is go through the process of change and the other one is pain till death go through the process of change or pain till death now you can choose there was silence there was silence for hours both did not speak to each other for a long time after a long time sakr broke his silence and he cried father i'm impatient please tell me what i have to go i will do it i select the process of change the father was very happy he said think over it again i give you time once you have started no way looking back because that where there is no pain there is no gain tell me father father took sakar to a corner and explained him everything in a very detailed manner and told him now i have to leave my son i will go we will meet after 5 months and then sakar now flies away sakar is left all alone in that mountain top no food nothing now he has to stay there for the 5 months and we, and he he had to first strengthen himself to go for this task he cried the whole night but no could no one could listen to what he, his cry and then he searched for insects and he lived upon it and then in the morning he collected the twigs from all around the mountain and then he built a nest and then he sat on it and you know what he did the first task that his father had said he had to break a strong beak i know how he had to dash himself on the wooden on the wood or on the rock and he had to do that till his beak fell into the ground it was very difficult the sucker had no choice he flew down the nest and he started knocking his beak he started knocking his beak he knocked he knocked he knocked he cried he knocked he cried he knocked but he did not stop he cried he knocked but he did not stop until his beak fell into the ground and then he fainted and there was no one to offer him water he he was in that position for the whole night and in the morning he got up he went back to his nest and what he did do he had nothing no other choice he had to wait for his beak to grow he waited there he was crying but he never lost his hope because he remembered his father's word no pain no gain then after a few months after a few weeks he saw his beak growing his happiness knew no bound he was so happy that he shouted he cried he laughed and then he went in search for something to eat he ate and then finally his beak grew strong and now he was ready for his another next task you know what it is harder than the earlier one you know he had to you know what he had to he had to break his talons he has to break his talons that grip where the eagle picks the food and then dives and then picks the food he has to break all his talons so that he gets his new trap now with the help of his beak he broke all the talons he plucked it he broke it he did everything it was a very painful process he cried he yelled he shouted but there was no one to hear him his heart was shaken but he remembered his father's word no pain no gain he cried but he was not shattered he tried he cried he tried he cried he tried till his last talons were removed and then he went back to his nest and what else he could do he waited he waited and waited and waited for a very long time but he did not lose his hope because he remembered his father's word no pain no gain then slowly his talons grew beautiful talons the strong grip 
you know, Sakhar was really so happy, but he didn't, but he did not want to, he did not want to do anything right now. And he did not want to wait. He just wanted to go jump onto the last task, which was the most difficult one. You know what he had to do? He had to pick his feathers, the thick feathers that was stuck to his, to his chest and all over his body. He had to pick one by one. Tears rolled down when he thought about doing it, but no pain, no gain. He cried and cried and cried. He cried, he plucked, he cried, he plucked, he cried, he plucked, he cried, he plucked for the whole day and whole night till the last feather in his body. Blood was oozing out. Eyes, tears were rolling down. The storm within and the storm outside. He was remembering the, those days when he used to fly above the clouds and play and dance all those days. All these things were inside him. Then he remembered once again his father's words. No pain, no gain. He cried, he weeped, but he waited. He waited. He waited and waited. And finally, he saw his first feather grow in his body, which was light, which was beautiful, which was silky. He was so happy and he started thanking the Almighty for giving him. And he thanked his father and he thanked himself for being brave. He patted himself. He patted himself. He thanked all the Almighty and he thanked his father for showing him the right way. And he waited, he waited and waited till all his feathers grew. And now his wings were fluttering and they were not sticking into his chest. And now his talons had nice grip. His beak was strong enough. Now he was ready for the show. He did not wait. He was happy. He thanked the Almighty. He said, Almighty, thanks for the faith. Thanks for whatever you have given me. I have, I have, he felt that he had regained his strength. He was, he was really, it, he couldn't express himself, but he wanted to shout. You know what he did? He, he started his first flight. He flew above the clouds where he used to do. And he shouted, he cried, and you know, he danced for the whole day and the whole night. And then he came down, direct down to the earth, down, 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 down in the river. And he pulled a big fish with his strong talons. And then from there, he flight to his father's nest. He knocked the door and he entered and he yelled, he was happy, he hugged. And finally, his father, Nasser, was so happy that his son had won the battle of his life. He had accepted the change and then he lived up to his word. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That's an inspirational story. Yeah, actually, it is a, uh, the biological part of it is not true. It is a science fiction. Hmm. We have no idea that uh, really that eagle goes through this process or not. It is a science fiction. Mm -hmm. But the inner meaning is clear. Yeah. That uh, the... Uh, he decides to to take on the challenges of life. Thank you so much. Hmm. And moreover, what point I wanted to bring was when we open our mind and hmm. think about how the sucker thinks, hmm. then we will overcome all the difficulties that we have in life. Like uh, when when it is when storms come, all the birds fly into their nest. But what does this eagle does? He he flies above the clouds to save himself from the rain. So he thinks always out of the box. So in our life, if we think out of the box, definitely we will have a solution for our problem. Instead of crying over and doing nothing, it is better that pain is inevitable. Either way, we are going to face the pain. Why not we accept the change and face the pain? That is the point that I would like to bring out. Mm -hmm. Anybody, any resonations, thoughts? 
Um, Mashuda, I just absolutely love your enthusiasm. It draws Thank everybody you. in. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sam. You are so um, energetic in your telling. And uh, it, it just, I, I found it wonderful, actually. I thought it was marvelous. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Actually, I'm not feeling well, so I was tense whether I could do it or not. Then I thought oh. about uh, I'm running down with fever, cold. I was not able to do the session. Then I thought, why should I not do it? Uh, this is an example for me, so I did it. You've just proved your own message then, Mathuda. You can overcome anything yeah. if you do this. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Well, I want you to get a lot of rest because you have an important storytelling next weekend. Yeah, yeah. But you, uh, Mashuda has been involved with storytelling and um, motivational work, inspirational work with young people for, for many years now, Mashuda. Nearly about 20 years, I think, but right now I am behind the scenes. From past seven years, I'm behind the scene because I'm stuck with some other work. Mm -hmm. I'll be there by next year. Uh, by 2023, I'll be back. Till then, now I'm behind the scenes. And I'm also working on emotional intelligence for children right now. Mm. I'm doing research work. But if you use that same um, approach behind the scenes, I'm sure you're gathering a clan of supporters, Mathuda, with your um, uh, approach and your outlook. Yeah, I think it's marvelous. Thank you so much, ma'am. Rona, your father used to say there's no such thing as a problem, just different types of solutions. Yeah, a variety of solutions to a situation. <laughs> it didn't like the idea of it being a problem because he said that was far too negative a word. So we had to think of it being looking for a variety of solutions to whatever the problem was. <laughs> yes, and it's also said that problems are opportunities. Yeah. Very good. Thank yeah. you very much, everyone. I'm really blessed to be a part of the storytelling. And I'm very thankful to Eric because he has given us a, such a wonderful platform and he's working very hard. There is a little chair in, in heaven waiting for Eric. Well, you know, I, I, uh, of course, you know, this, what I'm doing, it, it has its difficult side because, um, you know, you want to make sure the storytellers appear on time and um, you want to make sure there's the audiences there. I mean, you know, today we have 23 people here, but um, most have their cameras turned off. So that's a little, uh, it's a little uh, challenging, uh, but um I mean, I, I, I've realized I'm, I'm kind of good at this kind of work, uh, of organizing work. So, um, I, you know, I, it, it, it seems it's appropriate that, that uh, I, I continue it, uh, even if, um, you know, even if it, it, uh, it's painful sometimes. Of course, yes. I've had you trouble know. with, I've had trouble with, with my computer or internet connection the, these past couple of weeks. I get kicked out of Zoom sometimes, so I can't figure out why. And mm -hmm. the Zoom people don't know, the computer people don't know, the uh, Airtel people don't know. So I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. The solution that I came upon today, which has worked today so far, knock on wood, is that every 90 minutes I've been switching back and forth between two different Wi-Fi systems. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe that's the secret, yeah. Somehow, <laughs> somehow it seems that they, they staying with one, either with Airtel or with ACT for more than two hours causes a um, some kind of yeah. over overheating. So yeah. um, at least so far today, switching back and forth is, has, is, is working. So that's a, that's a big relief for me. But the, those are some of the tensions in this, in this work. Yes. Well, I'm too old now to take on that kind of thing that you're doing, Eric. <laughs> I talk about it, I think about it a lot, but to actually do it, you're the doer, I'm the thinker. <laughs> well, you know, I, I've been working with video conferencing for years, and then when this pandemic came, somehow I jumped into action. Yeah. I, I said, I'm not taking this pandemic lying down. No, so no. immediately in May 2020, I, I facilitated a 24-hour uh, event like this. 
Yeah, then, I was part of that one too. Yeah, a small part. I told the yeah. story. Yeah. And then, uh, and then these last two Chennai storytelling festivals. So, um, you know, I, I thought I was going to be a great playwright. I still may be, but uh, I thought I was going to be an epic singer. I still no, I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to be a great epic singer. Uh, so you know, you after some time, you discover where your talents lie. Uh, in a particular, I, I knew, you know, it, it, it involved in theater and storytelling, but it takes time for things to settle and for you to realize what, you know, what you're good at and what you, what contribution you can make. Eric, your contribution is one that's quite rare because you are the one who brings out the best in everybody else. And you've heard that this morning. I've heard the people say, if it wasn't for Eric, <laughs> that should be on your gravestone. If it wasn't for Eric. <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, we can, we can, we can, we can, you can look forward to visiting my grave. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't be. I might, I'll be well buried before you, but everybody uh, else. No, it's, it's all right. amazing how, how thankful people are for what you do. I think it's marvelous. Thank you. Okay, Mashuda, thank you again. My pleasure. And um, uh, we're going to take a break now for, for uh, a couple hours. And then tonight, um, more storytelling, and then especially um, a workshop about creating and telling a long story uh, from Noah Baum, who's an expert in this. And uh, other, other things will happen tonight too, but I think that's one of the highlights, creating and telling a long form story. Okay, that'll be at eight o'clock uh, India time. Okay, I'm thank you. Looking forward to seeing Selena Eisenberg. She's on this evening. I think she's your very last teller. Yes, uh, the, the, yeah. the, the, the group that's been working with Jewish culture, they're going to be yeah. telling a long story in four different chapters. Each, each yeah. different person will be telling a different chapter. Yeah. And uh, well, Selena yeah, Eisenberg is one guys, of them. Listen, because she's the, they're, they're great. I know all of those storytellers. Um, so if you can get to listen to that, do, because it's, it's really great. Thanks very much, Eric. Thank see you. you okay, see everybody later. Thank you. 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 Thank you